Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, advice, and um, the mind works in a very unusual way. The, the way the thoughts roll into one another, the stream of consciousness. I was thinking about my son. Uh, he, at the time of this recording, he is in Israel uh, visiting my daughter and my grandchildren. And uh, at the time of this recording, we're in the month of Elul. This is the preparation for the uh, High Holy Days coming up to Rosh Hashanah. And I was thinking of my son on Rosh Hashanah and festivals and holy days. And um, I'm reminded that one of my son's favorite melodies in the synagogue is when you open the ark to take out the Torah scroll during um, a holy day, uh, there's a certain prayer that is said, a uh, quote from Exodus, and um, a certain melody. Uh, pardon my voice. Adoshem, Adoshem, Kelrachum, Vachanun, Erech, Alpayim, Varav, Chesed, Ve'emes. Those of you who have been to uh, synagogues, uh, during the High Holy Days and uh, Passover, Shavuos, uh, you will know this uh, melody. So I was thinking about the, my son, Rosh Hashanah, the, the melody, and the words, Notzer Chesed Lalafim. It goes, Notzer Chesed Lalafim. And the words, Notzer Chesed Lalafim, means that God preserves and keeps uh, acts of kindness for thousands of generations. And from then, my thoughts moved on to a story, as they so often do. Many years ago, um, Israel transported, airlifted, many Ethiopian Jews from Ethiopia to the to Israel. This was called uh, Operation Solomon, I believe. And um, a lot of international uh, negotiations and bartering had to go on. Um, the United States was helping Israel to try and uh, negotiate the airlift of these. Uh, of the Ethiopian Jews, and um, these people one day were starving, living in very harsh conditions uh, in uh, Ethiopia, and the next day they were uh, they were in Israel, and once again joined with the Jewish people. As I said, there was a lot of behind-the-scenes maneuvering with the U.S. and the Israeli government, the CIA, Mossad, um, to broker the, the, the release and the airlifting of these, uh, of these Jews, these Ethiopian Jews. And uh, one of the things it boiled, the two of the things, actually, that it boiled down to was the... Um, the Ethiopian dictator at the time, he demanded two things. One was he wanted $35 million. $35 million. And an apology rendered by the President of the United States to the Ethiopian dictator. The money wasn't so much of a problem. The apology, on the other hand, that was a sticking point. They didn't, people didn't know whether it was proper or whether it was something that should be done. Uh, was it con considered diplomatically correct? So the president convened a meeting, attended by 13 of his closest advisors. And they were asked to vote on the question and their vote would determine if thousands of Ethiopian Jews would live or die. It's a question of life and death. 
Now, one distinguished member of the intelligence community, uh, an African American, um, everyone looked to him for his opinion because at this point it was six to six. He was the tie-breaking vote. Everyone looked to him. They wanted to hear his opinion. This was the crucial moment. The gentleman stood up and he addressed the group. He said, gentlemen, I'm about to cast my vote. But before I do, I want to relate to you something that occurred to me 35 years ago. And it's critical to my vote on this issue today. Now, one hot summer in the uh, Harlem section of New York, a large and terrible fire broke out in a tenement house. The fire raged and all the people did everything possible to escape. The New York firefighters did all they could in their powers to contain the blaze, but um, it was too late. The fire was out of control. They were able to rescue all the tenants, or so they thought. Looking up from the street, they saw in horror. In one of the windows there were three children screaming for help. Help us, save us, please help us, save us. They screamed hysterically. The entire building was engulfed in flames. No one could or would go forward to save them. Suddenly, as if from nowhere, a young man appeared, rushes into the burning building. Minutes later, he comes out with these three children. In the meantime, the children's father, who was away, and he came. He, re, he came to the site of the, to this awesome site of this three babies being carried out of this burning building by this young man. And understandably, everyone went to, 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 to talk to him, to praise him, to thank him. And all the man said, this young black man, all he said was, I was only performing a mitzvah. He kept on repeating, repeating it. So I was only performing a mitzvah, a mitzvah. No one in Harlem, no, nobody from the uh, New York Fire Department had any clue what he was talking about. This advisor now, 35 years later, talking to the other advisors to the president, he said, I too did not understand what a mitzvah was until now. He said, you see, I was one of those little children that the young black man saved. And the guy who ran into the burning building, the man who saved my life and my sibling's life, he was an Ethiopian Jew. I know now that the mitzvah is a mitzvah. It was a good deed. My life was saved because of that good deed. And the advisor stood, looked at the other advisors, looked at the president, and he said, I want to repay that good deed. I want to perform a mitzvah. I vote that Operation Solomon be put into effect, that it be taken into action. An act of kindness, an act of chesed, performed by one individual many years earlier, decades earlier, planted a seed and sprouted 
and saved the lives of thousands. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. I hope you find them of some use. I hope you find maybe a little inspiration, a little food for thought. We are going to be doing more videos along these lines. And until next time, on behalf of the Amuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.